this interface has a gain range of 56 decibels and this one 55. That's very similar, so with both at their maximum gain settings, these two interfaces will record roughly the same signal level. Right? Wrong. Hey, Julian Krauss here, and I want to address a huge misconception regarding the gain of audio interfaces. In this video I will show you why so many people get this wrong and how you can compare the gain between different interfaces correctly. Before we start, let's see if what I'm saying is actually true. I mentioned before that the Focusrite 2i2 3rd gen has a gain range of 56 decibels and the M-Audio AR192 IV a gain range of 55 decibels. That's only a 1 dB difference and you might expect both interfaces to capture a similar signal level. Here I have a signal generator which outputs a constant sine wave. When I plug this into the 2i2 and turn the gain all the way to the maximum, you can see that the interface records a signal level of about minus 11 dBFS. Let's feed the exact same signal level into the AIR192.4 and you can see that with the gain turned up all the way, it records a considerably stronger signal of around minus 3 dBFS. This seems really counterintuitive, but trust me, it will all make sense at the end. Why is it that comparing the gain numbers stated by the manufacturers won't work? Well, there's a smaller and a bigger reason for this. Let's start with the smaller one. The first mistake that many people make is to compare the wrong specifications. Sometimes manufacturers state a gain range and other times they state the actual gain of the preamp. For example, the Focusrite states a gain range of 56 decibels for the 2i2. Steinberg on the other hand states that for the UR22C you can adjust the gain from plus 6 dB to plus 60 dB. Many people are quick to compare the 56 decibels of gain range of the 2i2 to the 60 decibels maximum gain of the UR22C. This is already comparing apples to oranges and this will not work. The gain range of the UR22C is actually 54 decibels because that's the range in which you can control the gain in. But let's say you are aware of this and you're only comparing gain to gain and gain range to gain range. There is still a fundamental piece of the puzzle missing and that's why the comparison of gain or gain ranges makes no sense for audio interfaces. In purely analog equipment this comparison would be quite easy. If one amp has 50 decibels of gain and another one 60 decibels and you would send the exact same signal into both amps, the one with 60 decibels of gain would amplify the signal 10 decibels more than the amp with 50 decibels of gain. I think we can all agree on that. But in an audio interface you do not only have an analog preamp in the signal chain, but also an analog to digital converter. That's the chip that takes the incoming analog audio signal and converts it to digital audio so that it can be recorded by your computer. When you're comparing the gain of two audio interfaces, you actually want to know which interface records a stronger digital signal for a given input. And here's where I shortly have to explain the very basics of digital audio level. Stay with me, this is generally useful information if you work with digital audio. You might have heard that the signal level in digital audio is stated in dBFS. This is short for decibels reference to full scale. This full scale is the maximum signal level the analog to digital converter can capture and it is also referred to as zero dBFS. All audio signals an interface captures have to be below this level, otherwise you would get clipping. That's the reason why dBFS units are always negative. Okay, there are a few exceptions, but let's not get into that right now. So a signal level of minus 20 dBFS simply means that the recorded signal is 20 decibels below the full scale which it is referenced to. The important thing is that this is a relative scale because all the values are referenced to full scale. If the full scale value were to change, the whole scale would change accordingly. Now you might ask yourself, where exactly is this full scale? Which analog signal level, so how many volts result in digital full scale? And here is where it gets interesting. Let's say you had an analog to digital converter with a full scale equal to 4 volts and you run a 1 volt signal into this converter. It would output a digital signal of minus 12 dBFS because 1 volt is a quarter of 4 volts which is 12 dB less or minus 12 dBFS. If you run the same 1 volt signal into a different converter that has a full scale equal to 2 volts the resulting digital signal would be minus 6 dBFS because 1 volt is half of 2 volts which is equal to minus 6 decibels. 
I know these numbers can be a bit confusing, but the point I want to make here is that where the full scale level sits in the analog world has a huge impact on the resulting digital signal level. And that's the whole problem. If you compare gains and gain ranges, you are just looking at the preamp in the interface in the analog world. But an audio interface also converts a signal to digital, and so you have to take into account the whole signal chain, including the full scale level of the interface, as this affects the signal, as I've just demonstrated. Technically speaking, the question which interface has more gain when talking about the digital signal that the interface captures really doesn't make any sense. There is no gain when going from the analog world to digital, it's just a conversion to a different scale. But I know that the majority of people are referring to this as gain, so let's roll with it for now. Now that you know that you need to include the full scale level into your calculation to directly compare interfaces, you might ask yourself, how exactly do I do that? Here's an easy formula, and if you don't like math, shortly after this I will show you an even simpler option. You take the maximum input level, subtract the gain range, and this gives you the lineup level. Here's an example. The 2i2 has a maximum input level of 9 dBU and a gain range of 56 dB. So 9 minus 56 equals minus 47. The Air 192 has a maximum input level of 1.5 dBU and a gain range of 55 dB. So this comes out to minus 53.5. Please note that the results are negative and the more negative the number is, the more gain the interface has because it can bring an even smaller analog signal up to full scale. Now you can directly compare the results and as I've shown in the beginning, the Air 192 has more gain compared to the 2i2, in this case about 6.5 dB more. Like I said, if you don't want to calculate any of this stuff, then you can simply check out my reviews. I always measure the signal level at the maximum gain setting and this results in this graph here, which in most cases is even more precise than the calculations based on the manufacturer's specs. This graph is sorted by gain from top to bottom. So interfaces like the Focusrite Claret Plus 2 Pre or the Rode AI1 will record a considerably lower digital signal than let's say a Moto Ultralight Mark V when fed the same audio signal. Now is this a problem? In most cases, no. As with the majority of microphones, you can still get the signal level up to a decent recording level. But if you use very low sensitive dynamic microphones, like the infamous Shure SM7B, you might find that your recording level might be still a bit low, even if you've maxed out the gain with some of the interfaces that sit lower on the graph. Even then I would argue this is still not a huge deal, because you can simply amplify the recording a bit in post. That said, if that's not an option for you, you like to use low sensitive dynamic or ribbon mics, and you want to bring your audio to a certain level in recording, then you might want to stay away from the lower gain interfaces. Ok, I hope you could see that comparing the gain of different audio interfaces is a bit trickier than you might have thought. The gain and gain range specifications should not be confused, and even though they definitely have an effect on the signal level captured by the interface, they alone do not tell you where the digital signal is going to end up at. If you want to know that, you have to do the calculation as shown in the video or look it up in my graph. And only then you will be able to directly compare between different interfaces. Subscribe for more audio myth busting, please leave a like if you enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one.